What does your prayer life look like on the backside of a really big event? What does it look like when you are seeking the Lord for healing? Today on the Midweek Move, we're going to talk about that. Hello and welcome to the Midweek Move podcast extension of The Healing Place, the podcast where we examine scriptures line by line, verse by verse, and ask ourselves what is happening here. And today, ladies and gentlemen, I'm joined uh, with me today, Pastor Scott. How are you doing, sir? I'm doing very, very well. Good. Glad to have you here today. Uh, we're going to be wrapping up Mark chapter one. It's been a journey. It's been like four or five weeks uh, <laughs> of just dissecting this one chapter, uh, which honestly I've, I've enjoyed the fact that we've been able to do it kind of bite size as short as Mark is. Yeah. There's a lot of depth here in these little B verses here. Absolutely. And it just goes in line with what we've been doing too in our Bible reading plans, mm -hmm. just like four five, six verses at a time, just to be able to get it in you and then be able to look at that in the context of everything. I think it's just super healthy. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right, well, we're going to jump into it. We're uh, we're on the backside of um, of Jesus doing a lot of things, uh, ministering in the in the temple, uh, casting out spirits, and healing uh, one of his disciples' uh, mother in laws, so she can make him a sandwich. <laughs> and so that is so awesome. <laughs> oh, you're healed. Make me a sandwich. Yes. <laughs> Man, talk about get up and serve. Uh, <laughs> so. Uh, but let's, uh, let's jump into it, starting in uh, verse 35 and 36, Pastor. All right. Now in the morning, having risen uh, a long while before daylight, he went out and departed to a solitary place, and there he prayed. And Simon and those who were with him searched for him. All right. So we pick up the narrative on the morning after a night of what many would call a successful evening of ministry. Um, you know, they were healing the sick, uh, the oppressed, the possessed, and the depressed. They were all, God just kind of came in and, and, and took care of all that in a single night. And uh, Jesus chose to do something interesting, whereas a lot of people after a long night would choose to sleep in. He gets up before the sun even comes out mm -hmm. to go to a quiet place a separate place uh, to pray. And uh, not only did he do that, but he did it alone without even his followers knowing where he was. Mm -hmm. So my question for you is, um, we kind of live in a place where, uh, a public age where at, at times, intimate moments with the Lord seem to become more about publicity stunts. Um, don't get me wrong. I mean, we've all made the occasional, like, you know, taking a picture of us doing our Bible stories like that. And some of that's we're at, we're doing it intentionally to inspire other people, to encourage people. Here's a word, but yeah, I think maybe the better wording, maybe just intimate moments seem to become more public. No, that's, that's a good way of saying yeah, it. Yeah yeah, yeah. 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 But here it's, you know, it's not Jesus is very quiet. So why is it essential for us uh, to do what Jesus th 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 uh, did, though, especially on the heels of a success, to get away quietly and to pray? Okay, I'm going to take this a direction that you probably didn't see coming. Let's rock it out. But when when I initially, when we walked through this and I looked at it, I, I just, the first thought that came to my mind in this statement was that we live in an age where intimate moments not just with the Lord, but intimate moments are made more public. Mm -hmm. We see this in pornography, mm. where the most intimate moment between a man and a woman is now being made public mm -hmm. for the world to consume. Right. Not just in the, the, the adult industry, but even now with you have OnlyFans, you know, you have all these different media platforms where now families are actually making their income by putting cameras in their most intimate place in their home in the bedroom. Mm -hmm. And I think that it is a, it now has become that way in the church. And this is something that we have been talking about for several weeks of how we have, as, as the church, quote unquote church, and I would say the, the, body of Christ, but I think maybe more just in the church world, we have taken on characteristics of the world and removed characteristics that can only be found in the body of Christ. Right. And we talked about this last week, um, that 
we have we have given people people that are uh, unsaved come into a church. We're giving them everything that they already have, and then we've removed the one thing that they don't have. Right. We've removed the things that they never hear about and they're never exposed to and they're never invited into, which is like his presence and the word of God and all these different things. And I think that that in this is another one of those things in the church world now that because everything has become so public and people have taken the most intimate moments to take them public, that now it has seeped into the church world now and it's like, Sometimes it does become, look at me, look at me. Mm-hmm. And that is a hard issue. Mm-hmm. You know, that's a hard issue. And But I also know that that there are things that God has spoken to us as the healing place that we don't put out publicly. Mm-hmm. And it's not because we're... we're um, it's not because we're trying to be secretive or anything like that. We just believe that there are moments, especially intimate moments with the Lord, that don't need to be put out for public consumption. Yeah. We just don't believe that is the way that it should happen for us. Mm-hmm. And uh, which is why we do a lot of the things that we do. It's why we do the online uh, community the way we do it. Mm-hmm. Um, that it's very much just sit down in a room just like this, talk to the camera for the online community, and it's not, hey, let's invite you into some really intimate moments that people are having with Jesus on a Sunday morning. Again, I'm not I'm not throwing shade at anybody. I'm just saying that that's what's been put into our hearts, mm-hmm. and and I think that this lands right there is that you know Jesus did a lot of things publicly, so he didn't do everything privately. Right. He did a lot of things publicly. He prayed publicly too. Mm-hmm. But there were there were moments where he catches away from everyone to the extent that he is. Um, that he is he is uh, demeaned for it at times, like he can be around crowds and he's healing people, and then all of a sudden, not everybody's healed, and he just jets, he's gone. Mm-hmm. Like, where did he go? What's happening? And and primarily, it's because people, although people, Jesus loved people and he served people. His number one focus was not people; mm-hmm. it was doing the will of the Father. Right. And in order to do the will of the Father, you got to know the Father. And in order to know the Father, you have to spend time with the Father. And in order to have an intimate relationship with the Father, you have to be alone with the Father. Right. And for Jesus, as, as we will find out here in just a moment, now the word has come out about Jesus. It's starting to get out. And you know as well as I do, once the word starts to get out, mm-hmm. then you have all manner of people clamoring just to be seen with somebody. Mm-hmm. Uh, in this day and age, I would have said it would have been like if we were to see an influencer or we were to see somebody that we know because of media, all of a sudden we get these feels and then we want to be seen. We want we want to take a picture with them. We want to do all this stuff. And, and they simply may just be doing what they normally do. And I think that Jesus, number one, it was because he needed that intimate alone time with the Father, and that wasn't for anybody else to consume nor know. Right. And then out of that time, then Jesus was able to heal the mother-in-law. He's able to heal this person. He's able to forgive this person. He's able to do this. But it was out of those most intimate times. And I think that um, I think that it is essential for us to do what Jesus did, and that is to be alone with the Lord. That is to uh, have those intimate times with him. It's not for us to tell everybody about. It's not for us to broadcast or anything like that. But it's just to have that that time, and especially after you've had, um, like you said, a, a, a very public time of ministry and success, quote unquote. Mm-hmm. But really, that's when the enemy comes with the greatest temptation. Yeah, is when you're on the mountaintop and you've just crushed it, and God's <laughs> doing this amazing stuff. Right. And then all of a sudden, it's like if you don't have those times away, sometimes you can be given to your own quote unquote success. Absolutely. That was super long. Sorry. No, it's all good. That wasn't a conversation. That was more of a just a... But do you get what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, I got gotcha. you. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, just um, again, and I think it just... Um, and I'd love to hear from your perspective, just how we have chosen here, because you've been on the forefront of that. We've chosen here not to do some of those things because of this very thing. Yeah. I mean, as far as the... And there's a level of protecting people's privacy and making sure they're okay. 
obviously. Privacy. Have you been watching Doctor Who? <laughs> a little What's bit. Going on? I've watched a lot of BBC lately. <laughs> I apologize, folks. <laughs> to our UK crowd, though, that was just for you. They're just if like, what's you, going on? If you're on the UK right now, you're <laughs> loving this. <laughs> so, but there is a level of protecting people's privacy and, and make sure they're okay. We do, like when we do pictures of, of the ultra time, we, uh, we do it from the back. We try not to get people's faces or anything like that because there is a, it's a, it's a life-changing moment taking place at the altars mm-hmm. for people's lives. And, um, but beyond that, it's a matter of what's taking place here won't translate for people outside of this place. Mm. And there are things that, like in this place right here, there's things that Jesus is going to handle in the wilderness to be alone that his disciples aren't going to understand the moment. That's right. They're and we gonna, see that even later on yeah. where he's like, you don't understand this. You won't understand, exactly. but you will. Yeah, you'll get there. But in the moment, you don't need this. This, is, right. this isn't for you. This is this is for me and the Father together. And there mm-hmm. are things in our lives, we've talked about this before, there are times that there are words that God has given me, they've given you, that are not meant for everybody else. That's right. It may be meant for uh, the, the, the one. It may be meant for the three. And, and this is a principle for about... People, the circle of friends you have, the, the one, the three, and the 12 uh, type of idea. And then there's the crowd. Yep. And 70, but, the 120, the 500, the 10,000, the 5,000. Yeah, yeah. And so yep. there's a level of understanding that. And so Jesus, he's getting around. He's like, I, it's, this is him and the Father because yep. he needs this. And if the I man, the disciples walk in, they hear him communicating with the Father. They're still, they don't even have the full revelation of who Jesus is. Yeah. They don't really ha- understand that Jesus is the Mashiach yet. And then they walk in, Jesus is talking with the Father in a way, and they're like, wait, what? Well, that's just like me. I'm I'm videoing myself, and I'm like, and the bubble the bubble meme above it is having an intimate time with the Lord. <laughs> it's like, no, no, I just broadcast this out to how many ever people, right. and it's not that. It's no. just not. Mm-mm. Say what it is. Right. Don't say what, you know, don't try to make it something it's not. And I think that's one of the issues that we have uh, in the church world is that um, a lot of times we're we're being disingenuous and dishonest yeah. with a lot of things we're doing. Just say what it is, and then that's okay. That right. it's better to say that than it is to lie about it, right? Because <laughs> exactly. that's a motivation of the heart. Exactly. And so it's like, hey, look at me. I'm just being intimate with Jesus. Yeah. It's like, well, I'm holding my phone. I'm thinking about the focus point. I'm thinking, <laughs> am I really? Yeah. And no, I'm. I'm not. Yeah. We call that cr- uh, Christian cringe content now. <laughs> that's the. That's what you call that now. <laughs> nice Christian cringe content. Yep. CCC. Yep. <laughs> gotcha. Gotcha. I'm learning something. Yeah, yeah, not to be confused with CCL. Uh, but if you guys would like to give us a discount on our license, CCL, yeah, yeah. By the way, not a sponsor. No, <laughs> never a sponsor. Oh my goodness, we're gonna get tagged or we're gonna get whatever, aren't we? I don't know. We'll find out. <laughs> That'd be funny if they did comment on us. Like, well, I mean, we can if you want to. Uh, <laughs> uh, we're still waiting on that brand deal from the water company, though. Uh, That's right. <laughs> and Yeti, by the way, if if you want to come on in, you can come on. In. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, it's one of those. I'm still waiting for my brand deal from Whataburger. <laughs> so, <laughs> all right, let's continue on before this goes. Yeah, Dasani <laughs> never called me back either. <laughs> Still a little bit upset about that. Uh, All right, verse 37. Um, And by the way, guys, like when we go into these things, this isn't like we're not in the theology room of of AGTS and, and, you know, we're walking through this just as two guys mm -hmm. learning what the Lord is saying and then trying to communicate that uh, to you and let you in on that. So, it, this isn't really a man. We're just trying to walk through this together, and mm-hmm. as you do that, humorous things happen. Things come <laughs> up, you know, things that are just in normal life, and the yeah. scripture should be that way. Yeah, it should not just illuminate what's there, but it should illuminate also what's in our life, and and we should be able to look at it in light of our own lives and what we do daily. Absolutely. Verse thirty-seven. When they found him, they said to him, "Everyone is looking for you." But he said to them, let us go into the next towns that I may preach there also, because for this purpose I have come forth. And he was preaching in their synagogues throughout all Galilee and casting out demons. All right. So uh, the statement the disciples uh, make here carries kind of this interesting tone. It's like 
they're again they're being honorary of Jesus, but there's almost this awe of like, why aren't you out where people are seeing you? Almost milking the moment, if you will. Um, they they really expect Jesus to be publicly with other people, and some of this could be leans to the conversation about how they saw rabbis in general, because that was a thing that the Pharisees and religious leaders that they were just they were always very public about what was going on, and um, some to the degree of you know look at me. Uh, there's a there's an old joke I heard about. Uh, there's a thing from my understanding with uh, the talit that the longer the talit was, the more humble a person was. And there was the stories about old rabbis who would walk with talits that drug on the ground because they were just so humble. And uh, and so if you're saying I'm so humble, you're probably <laughs> not, not humble at all. <laughs> but this is a this is the mindset that they viewed rabbis and religious leaders. They're like, well, you should be out being seen because of how great of a rabbi you are. Um, yet Jesus is quietly away. So my question for you is, Jesus understood the moment uh, before the area was over, though, and it was time for him to move on to the next place. How can we develop a discernment to know when it's time to dig into a place? Because that's the thing. There's times where you need to, all right, do some work here. We'll continue to plow and continue doing stuff in spaces. And I'm not talking about just here Jesus is physically leaving, but like even in, in one area, you know, my time is done with this. Time to move here to do this. Uh, I was wondering if you could speak to that, uh, and maybe if you want to include a, a conversation piece that we have here at the church called the Law of the Turnip. Also, yeah, oh, yeah. Um, well, I, I think the answer to this is probably in what we just dealt with. Mm-hmm. Why did he catch away to be alone with the Father? Because he says, "Let us go into the next towns that I may be preached there." Also, because for this purpose I have come forth. Mm-hmm. How does he continually know what his purpose is mm-hmm. through intimacy with the Father? He's doing the will of the Father. And so uh, there is a there is a discerning in that, and again, you you hit it. There is a time that we plow, there is a time that we plant, there is a time that we water. You know, uh, all those have different seasons and times. And and I think just as everything, we take it to the nth degree, and you know, we decide our time with someone is done. Mm. But it's more just that we're uncomfortable and we don't want to really press through. Right that moment. So we easily just disregard it and move Mm. on and then do it in the name of the Lord told me. Mm. And those things are so dangerous. But I I think that Jesus, you know, again, I don't, I don't think this is a conscious thing with everybody where it's like, Hey, you know, you need to be seen or it's him going, Hey, I don't want to be seen. I think it's just normal. The, the, the normal Christian life, the normal life following the Lord it ju- this is the fruit of it. Mm-hmm. The fruit of it is, hey, okay, we've we've done that. I've had my time away with the Father, and now let us go to the next towns. I want to preach there too, mm. right? There's a whole other segment of people who need to hear, so let's go. And he's really creating a template for them that they would follow in the book, of, starting the book of Acts. Mm. It's like they were here, and then they were there, and then they were there, and then they were there, and it was like, to me... As they're following him, he is creating a template for them moving forward when the Holy Spirit comes and fills them and he's no longer there. Yeah, definitely. He's kind of, they don't know that. Mm -hmm. And we only know it because we've read the rest of the book. (laughs) But like, if you just read this in real time, he's really creating a template. Don't get so caught up in the moment. Don't get so caught up in who you are and what you've done. Don't get so caught up that you cast out demons and you do all that stuff, which he talks about later. Yeah. Like, there's going to be many that come to me and say, Lord, Lord, did we not do these things? He's going to say, depart from me, for I never knew you. Exactly. And so he's really creating a template for them uh, moving forward. Again, it's these things that they don't even understand, and we've all had this. Yeah. Like, I've had mentors in my life who are teaching me something that I don't even understand they're teaching me until after. Right. Right? So it's not even in the moment. But yet they're teaching and they're modeling something for me. And so I think it's it, it's less for him <clears throat> of, of uh, hey, I'm just going to move on. That wasn't important. I don't think that was ever in Jesus' context. Everything was important because everything he did was important to the Father. Mm-hmm. And so I don't think it was just one of those laissez-faire, one of those leaders like, hey, I'm done with you. You don't matter. That's not what Jesus is doing. His whole thing is, hey, you've received what the Father had for you. There's a whole other group of people who have not even heard about this. Right. Man, let's go find them. And mm-hmm. so it's always with the context of there's someone. 
there's someone. Mm. There's someone. It's not that you don't matter. You matter. You matter so much that this happened in your life. Right. But there's somebody else who doesn't know. And so I think Jesus is always thinking that way. And it even goes on. You know, he was preaching in the synagogues throughout all of Galilee and casting out demons. So inevitably there was something that needed to happen yeah. where he was going <laughs> because it wasn't just they need to be taught. Right. There was demonic oppression right. happening. So yeah. I don't know if that's an answer, but no, it does. Yeah. <laughs> so good deal. All right. All right. So we're going to continue on. We're now in verse 40 uh, through 42. Now a leper came to him. That's very important right mm -hmm. there. Imploring him, kneeling down to him and saying to him, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Mm -hmm. Then Jesus moved with compassion, stretched out his hand and touched him and said to him, as a matter of fact, stretched out his hand and touched him. Another huge deal. Yeah. These are two very important phrases in this scripture. And said to him, I am willing, be cleansed. As soon as he had spoken, immediately the leprosy left him and he was cleansed. Yeah. All right. So as you alluded to, this is, this is a major deal. First off, there's a man with a little leprosy, which is uh, uh, there, are, there are several types of skin disease that were wrapped underneath the umbrella of the term leprosy. But the reality is if you had leprosy, you had to be away from people as far as possible. Not just that, Jesus himself as a rabbi just and a Jew had to stay away from the, him. Otherwise, he would become unceremonially clean also, or ceremonially unclean. So there's a lot of things happening. But this man comes to Jesus and... Uh, he approaches boldly, but also with a lot of respect. He's imploring or begging Jesus for healing, uh, but he's doing it with the understanding that it can only be done by the will of the Lord. He's not going to Jesus going, hey, I need you to do this. He understands, I would like for you to do this, please, but I understand that this can only happen if it is your, truly your will. And uh, Jesus, again, stretches out his hand and lays his hand on the man. This is not supposed to happen. This is a big ordeal. That's right. And it says that Jesus was moved with pity or moved with compassion, depending on your translation, and brings healing to the man in this moment. And I got a couple questions I want to just kind of walk through this with you. <clears throat> First off, what about this man's approach to Jesus can we learn for our own personal prayer life? Uh, humility. Yeah. Um, he, I think we've almost been taught to come to the Lord in some demanding way. Mm -hmm. Like we command, bada, bada, bada. Mm -hmm. We demand... Da, 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 da. And it's just so not yeah. uh, biblical. Mm -mm. It's That's not the asking and seeking and knocking that mm -mm. Jesus talks about. Right. Uh, because Jesus always goes back to the motivation of your heart matters, even right. when you're asking and seeking and knocking. Mm -hmm. You can ask for a lot of things, but if your heart is not in the right place, then mm -hmm. the result is probably not going to be what you expect it to be. Yeah. And so I think the humility of the man is, is number one, because ultimately he understands as a leper, Mm -hmm. He's not supposed to be approaching this this man. He's not supposed to be approaching him at all. And yet he doesn't allow his desperation to be healed to cross a line of demanding something mm -hmm. from him. So yeah. there's still a humility about him yeah. uh, in his begging and in his seeking and knocking. Right. There's a difference between coming to the Lord with boldness and coming to the Lord with arrogance. Absolutely. And there are some people that in their prayer life, it, it's arrogant. And um, I, I just saw a video the other day. Um, lady, there was a, it was a, on a, it was a TikTok and cops came out to a, a restaurant and lady was like refusing to pay for her meal and she dined and dashed. And she was like, well, the Lord's going to take care of it. The Lord's going to, and the guy's like, Jesus isn't paying for your meal, lady. And, <laughs> and uh, but she was so, I, I prayed it. And it's, and again, this is an extreme of situations, but there are people like that who, I mean, it's like, this is what it's supposed to be. It's like, is it? Yeah, and they almost use Hebrews where it says to come boldly before the throne. Mm -hmm. um, they almost try to use that, mm -hmm. and that's not that's not boldly. That's not even the root of that word. It's like you're trying to manipulate the Lord to do something for you. That's right. So. And I love one of the quotes we had from Wednesday night when we were talking about fasting and the benefits of fasting. is like, we don't fast to move God's heart. Mm -hmm. we, we do it to know God's heart. Yeah. Big difference between those two things. Yeah, if I'm praying to move God's heart, then I'm saying that he can change. Mm. And he's unchanging. Right. Like, I'm the one that needs to change. Mm -hmm. I'm the one that needs to transform in this relationship, not him. Right. I just need to know his heart. That way, when I approach him, I will know how to approach him. Exactly. And I, again, I love the fact that the leper is desperate because 
that word begging is almost in every translation, mm-hmm. imploring, begging, and but yet he still has a humility about him. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. All right, so my next question, this is one that um, a lot of people have asked over the years. And they read this passage, and some people struggle with the fact that Jesus instantly healed the man. And they connect, then some people ask, why doesn't Jesus have compassion for me? Mm. How do we wrestle with the fact that sometimes Jesus heals instantly, sometimes he doesn't, and sometimes not at all? That is a um, very expansive question. Mm-hmm. Um, to to boil it down to one thing, I think would be the sovereignty of God. Yeah. Always keeping the sovereignty of God in mind in every situation. Right. God is sovereign, and I know that sometimes people don't think that we can move in the sovereignty of God and be in a charismatic space, but that's so not true. Right. Um, when I pray for somebody to be healed, I'm genuinely praying in the name of Jesus they would be healed. Mm-hmm. I try to avoid using terminology that would get outside the scope of, of what God has called me to do in praying for people, um, but always with the sovereignty of God in mind, and that's where discernment of the Holy Spirit comes in. You know, if you're praying for somebody, I genuinely want them to be healed, but there might be discernment that's happening in my spirit that because I'm totally dependent upon the sovereignty of God, it still doesn't mean that I can't step into a situation and believe by faith mm-hmm. that God can heal somebody. And uh, again, I, I think some people go, oh, that's a cop out. You know, that's an easy cop out because, you know, you should, you know, it should be healing all the time and use the sovereignty of God as a backdrop where then other people will not pray at all for miracles or healings because they say, oh, it's just the sovereignty of God. And so, I think both of those things are wrong. Yeah, I think that there you pray with expectation that God is going to heal. You lean upon the Lord um, to answer in a way that that is in line with His perfect will. Um, but it doesn't mean that we shouldn't keep asking and seeking and knocking. It mm. doesn't mean that that healing is not for today and miracles don't happen today. They do. I think generally. Uh, a great swath of, of church people would say, well, if God's going to do it, he's just going to do it without me. Mm. But God has chosen to use people, not just right now, but all throughout the entire Word of God. God yeah. has chosen to use people, and if the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God, dwells inside of us, <laughs> then things aren't just going to happen. He chooses to use us to flow through our lives and use the giftings that he's put inside of us to help other people find a place of healing. Yeah, And... Um, so I, I get the struggle, man. I get it Yeah. because I, you know, I pray for one person and something happens in their life and I pray for another person and maybe it doesn't look the same. And I'm like, man, why? Like, mm. and quite honestly, I'm going to be totally transparent here. I, I would pray for somebody and know them and know their motivations and watch them get a healing from the Lord and pray for this person and know them. And know their motivation and go, man, God, why'd you have that person? Like, I think I'd rather them be healed. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But it's like, that's not up to me. Mm-hmm. That What's up to me is to be faithful to the Lord and to be faithful to do what God's called me to do. And God didn't call me to pick and choose who I'm going to pray for. Yeah. You know, I can discern whether I should pray for somebody or not. But at the same token, it's like, you know, who am I to judge that part? My, mine is judging my own spirit and my own heart to make sure that if I'm praying for this person that I may not quote unquote like, that my faith is not less because of my personal opinion about this person. Mm-hmm. Because that doesn't matter. Right. All that matters is the sovereignty of God and the will of God and what God wants to do in that moment. And again, right. it's not an easy answer. Um, and again, you'll be criticized for saying that. Yeah. You know, because people, oh, again, that's an easy out, but. I, there are mysteries that I will never understand here on the earth. Yeah, and the reality is it's not an easy out. The nature of us as humans is to have an answer, to know what's going on. The nature of pastors is to know what's going on. And for us to go, man, I don't know. Which is actually harder. Yeah, that's a, that's a struggle. <laughs> yep. And there is the, we don't know, understand. We know that there are times where some of these things that take place that the Lord is using it to shape us, to mold us. There's a greater thing taking place to build the faith of us in that greater community of some fashion. 
uh, look at the example of, of uh, Lazarus when he when he died, and um, you know his siblings like, where were you? And if you read the scriptures, Jesus like he heard, and he's like, cool, we're gonna wait a couple days. Like Jesus knew he was gonna die. And it's not that Jesus is excited. It's that he's like, yeah, sweet pain, suffering. No, because he ends up weeping. Yeah, Jesus doesn't isn't ex- isn't happy about us going through pain. And he's unhappy if we're, we're suffering from things. He weeps over those things. He still has compassion, but he still works those things out in our lives. Yep, the sovereignty of God. Mm-hmm. Again, it's it doesn't seem to work in certain circles, but it always works because it's the sovereignty of God. Exactly, exactly. All right, well, let's wrap this up, Pastor. And he strictly warned him, sent him away at once, and said to him, see that you say nothing to anyone, but go your way. Show yourself to the priest and offer for your cleansing those things which Moses commanded as a testimony to them. However, he went out and began to proclaim it freely and to spread the matter so that Jesus could no longer openly enter the city but was outside in deserted places, and they came to him from every direction. All right, so here Jesus charges the band to just simply not say anything. Like, go to the temple, show himself to the temple leaders, and give the offering that was given to him by the Mosaic Law. He doesn't obey, and now Jesus is actually unable to do ministry in the area as a whole uh, or in the town the way he planned on because this man has done this. So my question for you, aside from the apparent obstruction of ministry, why was Jesus so concerned about the man showing himself healed uh, through the community's customs? I perceive that this, if, if we're asking that question specifically about this, has to do with every other uh, aspect of when we see Jesus saying, don't say anything. Mm-hmm. Um, when he specifically talks to his disciples about it not being his time yet. Mm-hmm. It's not his time yet to be revealed. Mm-hmm. It's not his time yet to be revealed as the son of God. Mm-hmm. It's not my time yet. It's not my time yet. He over and over and over again throughout the gospels, he says it over and over and over again until it's time. And he doesn't tell them it's time until he gathers with them for that for that for that meal. Right. And he says, My time has come. Right. Like, and in those days leading up to that, he's giving them clues of my time is coming. But everything before then, mm. even to his own disciples, not just to a guy like this, even to his own disciples, he's like, Don't, mm-hmm. don't, 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 no, no, no. And we know that really the only time he really starts talking about his death is when he takes him up to Caesarea Philippi and um and establishes in that moment, um, on this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. They turn and they begin the walk back to Jerusalem, so to speak. It's in that moment that he first begins to talk about his death. Mm. And so to me, this falls into that category that it's not yet his time to be revealed, aside from the obstruction of ministry that he's not able to do anything. Right. But it's not time for him to be revealed as the Son of God, only the Son of God, could have done the things that he's about to do and was doing at the time. Yeah, absolutely. Good stuff. All right, guys. Well, we want to hear from you. How has this encouraged you? Has it challenged you? Reach out to us uh, and let us know how we can pray with you guys. Let us know how we can help to really help you take your next step in your relationship with Jesus. We we don't just create this for for the, the content to go out. It's not just a matter of just putting stuff out there on the internet. We're doing this as a ministry unto you guys there in the online community. So if we can pray with you, encourage you, reach out to us. MediaHub at teachmeshreport.com is our email address. Check out teachmeshreport.com for more information about The Healing Place. And until next time, have a great week.